What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Shepherd channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans. Likes, locks, hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell goes a long way for me on this video, goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whatever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Great content if uh, Louis Hill did not, again, heal. This guy, seven walks, seven walks in his outing, had filthy, ridiculous stuff, but like, buddy, there's a couple of times you just got to get it in the zone. Just get it in the zone. Get in the zone, auto zone. I don't know why that came in my head. I don't think we're going to get flagged on YouTube for that one, Producer Jacob. But anywho, friends, we got BetMGM. We got everything down below in the comment section for you for over for Odd Chopper. Again, uh, hopefully we can get the Yankees to have a late rally here during the seventh inning. Uh, down 3-1, pain, suffering, personified, watching a dude just walk guys in. He's got great stuff. Hashtag no regrets. Also, can we get after Chris Bassett? Let him go six and a third, whatever. Anyway, producer Jacob, high 15 games. We're going to get flying again, friends. Lots to get to. Yesterday was kind of like, there were a lot more spreads, a lot more, well, it's mainly just money lines. And then today, a lot of leans. We, we got a lot of perspective things going on here, but I do have a lock on the card yet again. Better start hitting these or I'm going to quit. Anyway, producer Jacob, hi, hello. Let's get to the picks. Our day begins with a couple of struggling pitchers. Well, every pitcher other than Tariq Skubal in Detroit is struggling. So there's that. that. That just kind of is what it is. But we got John Gray here, somebody that we successfully bet against once upon a time. John Gray kind of riding the struggle bus. 563 expected slugging, 50% hard hit percentage thus far. And again, the strikeout rate, 23.7%. Kind of doing what he does. Again, that, that strikeout rate has been lingering around this, 22, 23, 24% for the last however many years. But this hard hit, and then 515x Wobicon stick out like a sore thumb. So a little bit problematic here in trying to back anything on the Texas money line side, right? Wrong, Casey Mize, friends. 53.1% hard hit percentage, 14.3% K rate. And I know that Detroit with Carson Kelly and Matt Veerling and Mark Canna and you know Riley Green and Kerry Carpenter, who we've bet a couple of times, this Detroit lineup looking better. Oh, Spencer Torkels, and he's having a terrible year again. Hopefully he can start hitting the ball hard again. But anyway, this is a Detroit lineup that still going to parallel in comparison to the Texas one. I think this is just Texas money line if you want to do anything. But I'm probably not going to do anything here. Just saying. It's the play that projects out better. John Gray should be able to get some strikeouts against. There'll be a decent amount of righties there in that Tigers lineup. Game number two, and my twins just so... I don't even know why I turned that game on after Live Before Lock. I mean, it was just like, home run, home run, home run. Cedric Mullins going yard. Gunnar Henderson going yard. My twins are going to have problems. However, for the most part, still a decent XFIP out of the bullpen. And yes, I'm going to start intertwining some bullpen as we accumulate sample size here. Two, three weeks in, I can start to at least throw in a couple of tidbits there. The twins, decent enough bullpen. Problem... Orioles are pretty damn good too, and they bring Grayson Rodriguez here to the, I almost said plate, and that's not right, the bump, there we are, Baltimore, I mean, this is like just player pass kind of situation here, but you got to get a little bit more aggressive, mainly because, and this lineup is just ridiculous if it's firing on all cylinders, if they start to have that lefty production, they have Holiday come along for the ride. Obviously, the things Mullen's doing so already up to four jacks, looking way better here at the bottom half of that lineup this season than he did at the top of it two years ago. All star, I'm going to kind of write it all off because he was hurt like nonstop there. And Kowser, hey, congratulations! 0 for four with four strikeouts, even though the hard to hit data is still out of control with the 352 expected batting average. What a weird box score that was. The Twins, of course, losing. That's not weird. But Chris Paddock, we know at this point in time, I also do not like him, right? Good. 490 expected slugging, 17.5% K rate. He's not going to get better. It's just a problem. Our starters are a problem this season. I miss Gray. Kind of miss my Maeda even. Ugh. Pablo Lopez is going to have to just like win every time out. And it's asking a lot. And here we are. But Grayson Rodriguez, friends, we could end up getting aggressive there. That run line potentially paired here with just a Grayson Rodriguez mows down the Twins lineup. And the Twins, 27.7% K rate here against righties thus far. I love Grayson Rodriguez, the 28.4% K rate. So I'm just going to throw a perspective 7 plus. Can we do that? Perspective 7 plus, assuming minus 110. And then Baltimore on the run line. Think that's going to be a lean here as well. But fire those up, friends. Lean, lean. But the Grayson Rodriguez one, very live to make the card.
Next on our tour, Colorado and Philly. I'm going to start with Ranger Suarez here, the Southpaw. Well, two Southpaws. We've got Austin Gomber here on the other side of things. But uh, as you sit here looking at Ranger Suarez, he's just... I, I don't think this is sustainable. Two years ago, we saw this kind of Ranger Suarez. And I mean, 30.2% K rate right out the... I mean, 2.20 expected ERA. Everything across the board just shocks me how good Ranger Suarez has been. Here's the problem is now you're paying for it. Minus 238 against Colorado. No, thank you. Again, I think Colorado is one of those teams that, again, this is why record is stupid to a certain extent. Because, like, if you bet Colorado at plus 195 here, it's probably the side that you're getting. Well, there's no positive expected value, but it's probably the one that you make more money on than betting Ranger Suarez at minus 238 anytime long term. So, again, record, it's its own thing. I know that. A lot of people keep track of it for certain purposes. I think it's good to keep track of it and pick them. How many plays am I hitting? Am I routinely identifying the best picks on the board, especially if there isn't correlation intertwined? That's a conversation for another day. But plus 195, I'm not going to be partaking in that either. But I think home runs are going to be very interesting. And in fact, Austin Gomber, left on left, this is a confirmed thing. 272 expected ISO in 2023, 426 pitches to lefties. Kyle Schwarber. He's lefty. I know it's left on left. It's not going to look cool. It's going to be cool. You know it's cooler than being cold? Ice cold. Some might call those my locks. But Austin Gomber, friends. Austin Gomber. Goodbye. Kyle Schwarber to home run. That's what we got going here. That's a lean, but it's probably going to be a play. And we went lean, lean, lean. But here's the thing. The Grayson Rodriguez gave you a pretty decent prop from Baltimore. I think six and a half. If that is minus 110-ish, my twins are going to get completely mowed down by him. That's cool. Kyle Schwarber, really interested. Again, plus two, like plus 255 is in play for Kyle Schwarber left on left there. FanDuel, usually going to have better odds than that. So two plays that kind of exist in the early portion of the window here. Uh, the Texas Detroit one, just sleep in, just hang out. We're not going to bet that whatsoever. But. I think this is another bet for me. San Francisco, Miami. I was a little bit surprised to see minus 135. Now, Mr. Withers, Mr. Withers over there on the other side. It's Weathers, but you know, it's not as cool of a bet. Anybody else watch The Simpsons? Just me? No, you watched it too. Stop it. But Ryan Weathers, uh, not good so far. 18.5% K rate, 475 expected slugging. 14.3% barrel percentage. He does pitch for Miami. He has a good home ballpark. And I think there's only room for improvement there. But I think Jordan Hicks, this guy, this guy is out there chucking. 96 velo, so the velo down tiny, tiny bit. Because again, he is a guy who gets changed from his role in St. Louis. Bullpen arm, bullpen arm, bullpen arm, bullpen arm. They just lengthen him out here. And so far, so good. Now, the whiff percentage needs to get a little bit better. But the walk rate. That's always been something that's been double digits throughout his entire MLB tenure. Maybe taking some of the velo down and going to like a more manageable alignment there as a starter here, and then going down to a four and a half percent walk rate, 2.15 expected ERA. Good little experiment, San Francisco. Good little experiment. I got to say that. In fact, so much so that this is my second favorite play on the entire board. And both of the plays, the, the one that is this and then the lock, they're both money lines, so high. This one's a little bit higher than the next one, so minus 135, you're paying a little bit more for it. But worth it, way better hitters. San Francisco, sorry. Way better pitcher thus far. We'll accumulate sample size. I think this is just, you go pick on the Marlins. And Jake Berger out for a while here. Ooh, Berger and fries. Not going to be available in Miami. But available right now, $14.95 weekly, friends. $49.95 monthly, the OS Premium Tools. Again, I'm giving you my best plays, mixing them in every single day with all the top plays at the of, of the OS ratings. We're talking the positive EV tool. We're talking the fantasy optimizers on underdog prize picks. Everything you know and love for parlays as well. What you know about parlay? You can check it out, friends. $14.95 weekly, $49.95 monthly. But it gets a little bit better when you use promo code... <gasps> Lindy, 20% off, friends. 20% off. Get that first week for 12 bucks. Get that first month for 42. Expert picks, Discord, premium tools, not just myself. You got Ben Raza firing hot fire. Firing hot fire? That I could have phrased that better. But anyway, uh, the soccer the, the soccer streets, the afternoon soccer streets have been kind. That Chelsea bet today. What an absolute goat he is. Anywho, all in one package. Promo code Lindy. Continuing on with the picks we go. We're going to go pitcher prop, pitcher prop, back to back here. Pitcher prop, pitcher prop. It just kind of sounds like uh, cut your band, cut your band, cut your band. Da, 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 da. 
I don't know, Glover is pretty talented. The Los Angeles Angels and the Soriano fellow are taking on the Aaron Savale. So we're going to talk about, well, I'll, I don't like Soriano. There, I talked about him. Do I have to break down everybody every single day? That's not the rules. I made the rules. 490 expected slugging. 43.3% hard hit percentage. We're not going to worry about him whatsoever. This price, uh, it's a little bit extreme here. I, We should probably go Tampa Bay and maybe pair it with it. We should probably go Tampa Bay and pair it with it. I did that on a play coming up here a little bit later because, well, I thought it was interesting. Actually, I did it on a play previous. Baltimore, Grayson Rodriguez. But Aaron Savali, friends, this guy, again, comes over last year. Looks good. Again, 27.3% K rate, 242 X Woba. And then you break down the matchup. The matchup, my friends. Oh, the Angels. Oh, they have so much power now. No, they don't. 24.3% K rate. I guess 135 has. No, it's terrible. Sorry. Had a hiccup. I'm not going to re record that. Aaron Savale, six plus. Six plus Ks. Can we get something in that ballpark, please? Five and a half, minus 110, minus 115. Fire both of those up instantly, but. I think this is going to be six plus for me. Six plus Aaron Savale. Uh, 242 X Woba just looks nice. He's going to go long into this game. And yeah, is what it is. Not as confident we're going to get the price that we want on Aaron Savale, if I'm going to be honest. I hope we get that number. Five and a half minus 110 minus 115. Based on his last couple of outings, based on his K rate here, it's not like the books don't get to look at the same data that we're looking at. So it's just a question of where people are going to move things where it opens first and also you have multiple sports books you want to have multiple sports books of exposure we'll talk about bet mgm in a second and obviously why you should have multiple sports books but they're going to come out with different prices you get to go to the supermarket you get to you know where you're going to go to i don't even want to i know high v is where i was growing up it's not the fanciest place it's no whole foods definitely no what's the what's the really fancy arrow one psychos $25 smoothies, GTFO. Anyway, you said Kikuchi. We're happy with him. I can afford a $25 smoothie because of this guy. K ladder. We climbed it to the top. It was fun. It was enjoyable. Again, it's so weird when you can just bet with the guy that you've picked on for years. But Kikuchi's made some very noticeable difference. One, 30.8% K rate, 10.8% walk rate. Those, that's, that's actually kind of what we've always had from him. I'm going to be honest. But the 2.73 expected ERA and then the curveball is really different right now. 100 slugging on it. 0 0.082 expected batting average. Do I expect this to regress? Sure, sure. But I want to at least point out that the spin on this thing is actually down. So I don't understand. 32.1% whip percentage, 27.8% put away percentage. I went through all of the different pitches. I went through everything to see. It's just, he's locating to a certain extent ahead in counts, but it's such a small sample size. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter what your name is. What I think is that we just have a guy in Yusai Kikuchi who's figuring out how to pitch. Now he's been in the big leagues for a while. He's 32 years old, been there since 2019. This might just be the season that he has a feel for that curveball and is locating it somewhat. And it goes from a usage. He didn't even have a curveball, friends, until 2022. So last year was the first year that he really, well, 2022, we pitched it like twice. But 2023 was the first time he ever really used it, feeling it out. And now it's his second primary pitch. Throws it more than the slider. So I think there's going to be an opportunity against the Yankees lineup. But sure, they haven't been striking out a ton against Southpaws by any means. They get Juan Soto and these other guys that are more contact guys and it's going to be hard to strike out. They have a 125 WRC plus because, you know, Judge, Stan, those fellows. But 18.7% K rate, I'm expecting that to be higher come season's end. I would be shocked if it wasn't. And as such, friends, I think a coochie ladder, it's going to be in play again here. Does five and a half end up being the open number six? But I'm looking seven plus Ks. I'm putting lean like. Again, the like, I want this to be like your red alert in baseball. I want it to just be like, oh, he's really interested in that. He thinks he's going to be projected much higher than where the books are in terms of like where Yusai Kikuchi should be set for that line. Good talk. Glad we had it. Let's also talk about MGM. I said it before. I'll say it again. You want to have exposure to as many places to put your money down at sports books, at pick'em sites, wherever it is, as you possibly can. And why? Because they provide you different 
odds. They provide you different lines. And as such, you can shop for the best one every single day. So if you have DraftKings, FanDuel, why not add BetMGM to the fray, friends? Not the band, just the fray. First bet safety net up to $1,500. Get your bonus bets down below in your, if your first bet loses. So it doesn't matter if it's 50, 100, 150, 250, up to $1,500. You can wager on your first play. You'll get bonus bets back immediately, friends, if it loses. So take a big shot. Take a risky proposition. Fire it up. Get your self-exposure to it. Build that bankroll. Sustain that bankroll, friends. And check out BetMGM at the link below today. If you're 21 and over, if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. Pretty pissed off because I woke up. You know, I, th I thought it would be a good idea. Well, last night it was. I decided to fire up Boston minus one and a half. <laughs> Lost six, nothing. Good talk. Glad we had it, Eric. And yeah, Tristan Cassis didn't hit a ball over. Like a... I had to hit a ball off Frankenstein's fat foot. He's right. Take a shot, Mr. Gilmore. Hurt. Gilmore two's coming. That'd be fun. We got Tanner Beebe. He hasn't been very much fun if you're a Guardians fan because everything else has been fun if you're a Guard Guardians fan. It's better than being a Twins fan at the moment. Never thought I'd say that. Even with Shane Bieber gone, though, you're going to have to find something else because this is not going to be your long-term solution. Just having Tanner Beebe out there throwing softballs. 577 expected slugging, 12.3% walk rate. Now, I'm being a little harsh because I do think Tanner Beebe is better than this, the righty here. But 23.1% K rate, that's the only thing salvaging him. Because again, another 500 plus X Wobicon, 516 thus far, four seamer not seeming, slider not sliding, change up not changing, curveball not curving. The schnozberries taste like schnozberries. So what do we do about it? Well, I don't know. Oh, by the way, Boston has, you know, Fair Willock, he's been pitching really good. These K-props are probably going to be out of control for him, even against Cleveland. And it's just a scary matchup because they don't strike out against anybody. So it's going to be like five and a half. And I'm going to want to take the under, and it is what it is. But I will be looking, friends, at Tyler O'Neill against Tanner BB right on right. 630 expected slugging, 435x Woba here for Tyler O'Neill thus far. Uh, we did get Rafael Devers there in that lineup today. 523 expected slugging. Didn't matter. They still suck. And I'm going to look at Tristan Cassis again one last time. For one more time. Boom, 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 boom. Tyler O'Neill home run lean. Oh man, we've reached a really dead area of this program here. I feel like just playing music. Now, this Jones character, this Jones character, I think he made people happy the other night, right? Yeah, we we talked through that one. I, I like him very much. But now again, this is gonna just escalate. What happens is it's like the it's like the yodeler on the prices, right? Ooh, and then they fall off the end if you go over. Some of you really know what I'm talking about. And some of you are just like, this guy needs to shut up. Actually, I probably do need to shut up. But anyway, I think it's going to be this character. It's Jones character. It's back in our lives. Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones. Who? Jerry Jones. 34.7% K rate. 2.8% walk rate. 292 X Woba, good ice sniper. 54.5% hard hit though, not ideal. But Jose Quintana, friends, there's no way I'm going to bet on him. God, 304 expected batting average, 488 expected slugging. He used to be good once upon a time. Those days feel like forever ago. I'm not going to do the forever because it's not Christmas. And I think I've already made like four references to other programs in this bit. So we're going to continue on our merry way. If I had to do anything right now, I'd be looking at the Pittsburgh side of things, but like kind of need lines we need confirmation on jones but like get mr jones up on the low or something i don't know another quick one we got to fly through this brady singer uh fitty <laughs> fitty we don't like him we we really do not like him sam i am we do not like him with green eggs and ham. But here's the thing. It probably ends up being Jonathan Cannon. I think this is the guy that more than likely gets called up to have this start. Now, back-to-back -back days, the White Sox are going to roll out a guy who's never had a major league start before, and it is April 15th. Do you know how pathetic that is? Do you know how insane that is that a team is already punting with punters? 
punting with like their their dues. Now, here's the thing. They're trying to create some sort of value for them, trying to see if they have them right from the get-go. And it's a lost season. They're not going to be good. The White Sox need to try to create value and develop young players. So if you want to develop them at the big league level and say, you know what? We're not going to send you down there. We know we're not going to be competitive, even in this terrible AL Central. And Jonathan Cannon, 6'6", does have fireballs to some extent, is what it would appear, I think, looking at it. 1.55 whip, though, in a couple of starts thus far. Uh, he's going to get his hair whipped back and forth if he does something like that. But 11 strikeouts, so there's obviously something there. We'll find out tomorrow. Again, you don't have to bet everything. You can find out. You can wait to find out. I might not because Kansas City money line is a little too cheap for me if they're going to be getting like minus 165, minus 175 type numbers with Brady Singer here, who uh, I do think is better than the market suggests a lot of places, but he's had a great start to the season. So I'm worried that this price opens and it's going to be terrible, but pay attention. Not out yet. Jonathan Cannon, though, I believe gets the start or Fetty. God, I hate the White Sox. So we go lean money line, lean money line. Let's do a like money line. San Diego, Milwaukee, and Milwaukee right now. Uh, they had gotten out to a quick lead and talked about it. Thought about betting it. Did not. Did not think that it was something that we were going to uh, fire up in the premium Discord. After all, it got a little bit wonky there because they said I talked about the travel, talked about it being a situation, and I had a small little play on it, but I didn't end up putting in premium Discord. And thank God, because... San Diego was seven unanswered runs after that. And now they get their ace on the mound. Dylan Cease against Wade Miley. I don't understand this line. I just don't. I don't get it. This is borderline lock again, but it is a little bit behind the play that we'll get to next and a little bit behind that San Francisco money line purely for this reason. The San Diego Padres. I want to see the bullpen. I need to see it a little bit more. I'm not sure what I'm looking at here at the moment. I'm not even going to talk about it purely because there are certain numbers. Like we're starting to get XFIP and you want to kind of just put in the rotational pictures into fan graphs. Take a look at it. See if you can find what I'm talking about. But we're going to at least just go half unit here. I'm not going to have two locks on the card. So if I did, I'd probably be going to the San Francisco one with this one. But San Diego money line with Dylan Cease. This feels like a freebie. Again, I don't want to ever say that in baseball because anything can happen like you know, I can get off to another terrible April. And then, you know what happens? May comes around and I turn into a psychopath. In May, June, July, August, we smash the home run props and life is good. But Dylan Cease right now, 200 expected batting average, 30.3% K rate. Yeah, we like that. We lock it a lot. So we're going to bet it. That's really all it comes down to. Really good starter. And he's just being Miley. No, not, not good starter. Not good starter. We've reached the lock. I'm nervous because I'm probably about to put the like the, the voodoo on the Braves here. But here we are. Braves taking on the Houston Astros. And Houston Astros, they've been searching high and low. They've been trying to find guys in Framber Valdez. You know, he's had moments throughout the beginning of this season. But, you know, tail end of last season, horrible, horrible run. I will say the thing that's the most concerning, though, besides having to, like, already call up some dudes to make spot starts is this beginning of the year by Hunter Brown. Let's talk through it, friends. We talked through it last time, made a smaller play. We should have made a larger play is definitely the way that I'm looking at it. And here is why. Hunter Brown, he got issues. I got him too. We're not going to sing. Sorry, that's not what we're going to do. But an 8.71 expected ERA, 15.1% K rate. Now, it's only 208 pitches. Last season, he had over 2,700 of them. But I've got to at least point out a couple of things here. One... We have a decrease, friends. Yes, a decrease to some of the velo. Two, it's weird to see the spin come up here because, again, I do find him to be a pitcher that um, had some stuff coming into last year. He was a very highly touted pitcher, but the expected batting average now for batters going up against him is absolutely out of control. And the main reason, friends, in 2023, we're talking about a guy who was pitching at around 94 and a half miles per hour. Down to 94 here this season. So it's an ever so slight downtick in terms of that. But the location is a little bit off. And again, the spin is actually up on the four seamer, which is kind of a surprising little factoid. But it's down on the cutter. And it's down, well, just the cutter. I mean, it's just so wild to see Hunter Brown struggling like this at the moment. But the barrel percentage, he somehow avoided barrels 
But with the 55.3% hard hit percentage, it has just been horrific here to start. And by the way, it doesn't get easier when you have to face the freaking Atlanta Braves on the other side, and they are rolling out a pitcher in Reynaldo Lopez, who I said it before the beginning of the season, even before the Strider injury. I think he's going to be a huge key to their season because I really liked what I saw from him in 2023. Their limited sample, only 1,200 pitches, but 29.9% K rate, 12.2% walk rate, was able to elude around that into a 3.270 ERA, 4.01 expected ERA overall. Now, he only has one barrel on the season as well, but he is keeping it in the yard, doing a great job. 2.59 expected ERA thus far this season. My God, Reynaldo Lopez might be back. Because, again, he was kind of a confirmed thing in 2021. 2020, awful. That did not go well. Took him a while to get there, but at 30... Finding his footing eventually here with this four-seamer. Again, the four-seamer is basically all that matters with him. He throws it 65% of the time. Of course, yeah, you got to mix in the complimentary slider curveball. And depending on the handedness that he's facing, he basically is throwing just tons of fastballs no matter what. So it is what it is, friends. The curveball is exclusively like to lefties, though, for what it's worth. I like the Reynaldo Lopez stuff. I think they're the better lineup, even up against the Houston Astros, because top to bottom, Atlanta has no give. You're seeing a 10 total here, and Hunter Brown is definitely the one struggling between the two. It is very early. I don't want to go crazy, but if I'm getting minus 115 to find out based on all of the numbers I'm looking at and the change in velocity for Brown down just a half mile per hour, I don't see how this isn't your lock. for This, this should be north of minus 125, minus 130 based on everything that Brown has been bringing to the table thus far. And then, yeah, the Braves, they've got some spotty pitching themselves, but Reynaldo Lopez... He might be that guy. So I'm willing to be investing in a spot that does not feel 50-50 to me, like this line almost suggests. We are looking at something much, much closer there, friends, to that minus 135 type range, and that becomes a lock. Talked a long time about that one. I'll speed this one up here for you. Cubs, Arizona, and uh, we'll just say, say a Suzuki, he ends up getting put on the IL. That is a big bummer if you're a Cubs fan because... I thought he was going to be the best hitter in this lineup top to bottom. Now, Michael Bush, he's starting to figure it out. 756 expected slugging. Once upon a time, once upon a time, this guy was looking hella good, hella good with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Pretty touted uh, prospect as well. Exclusively utilized as a lefty at times. Didn't really find it right from the get-go. So, and the Dodgers, they win now. When you're spending infinity dollars on a baseball team, you try to win now. But Michael Bush help you win now, right now, especially compared to like a Mike, uh, Chris Taylor. <laughs> different handedness, different utilities, but you know, it is what it is. Just saying Michael Bush, 756 expected slugging, pretty ridiculous here at this point in time. But let's go into the pitchers quick. Tommy Henry, Tommy, Tommy Henry. Actually, we'll go to him second because Kyle Hendricks is terrible. 600 expected slugging, 12% K rate. One of the worst starters in baseball. Cake, cu uh, cupcake, I almost said cake cup matchup that's not a thing but tommy henry on the other side 49 percent hard hit 503 expected slugging so you just look at some of these power righties specifically christopher morell friends christopher morell i really like him for two plus bases might take a look at the home run prop here as well but based on his last couple they're getting inflated because christopher morell even when he was batting like in the nine hole religiously for this cubs team it's not like he was lacking in power. And with great power comes great responsibility for me to bet if I'm getting plus money on Christopher Morrell, two plus bases against Tommy Henry in a large ballpark. There's at least space in Arizona. So there's that. That's really all I got for you. Oh, God. Going into the most friendly pitcher park in baseball from last season, yet again here. Oh, Cincinnati, Cincinnati. I want to bet my guy Hunter Green, but I just can't do it. I can't do it, Captain. I don't have enough power. And then Logan Gilbert here on the other side of this one. I don't really have anything to tell you that you don't already know. He's pretty good, but like he's going to give up hard hit. It's going to be suppressed by this ballpark. 437, uh, 436 expected slinging, excuse me. 29.9% K rate. So sometimes maybe shit, sometimes maybe good or a other way around. Anyway, Hunter Green's really awesome so far. 170 expected batting average, 34.1% hard hit percentage. I want to pull the trigger on this so, so badly, but I don't trust Cincinnati's bullpen. I do not trust this lineup relative to Seattle. And yes, I do think Hunter Green is live for like 10 strikeouts in this spot. Wouldn't shock me in the slightest. I know that's a wild thing to say, but Seattle, 31.4% K rate. Yeah, we, we're we going to target Seattle a lot. This will probably not be a spot we get any kind of value. I 
We can see an eight and a half hung up here at open. So that'll be an enjoyable thing to pay attention to. But since the money liner pass as it stands right now, uh, got to pass on this one probably too. Lance Lynn, Mr. Power himself, uh, giving up power and then also getting strikeouts. That's the Lance Lynn way to go about things. Taking on JP Sears, which um, just like Sears, he is closed. 10.6% <laughs> K rate, 45.1% hard hit percentage, giving up fly ball contact and has some lefties. To, well, he's a lefty taking on righties that... Uh, we're going to see Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado start to hit it better. I would be shocked if we did not. I don't know. Otherwise, St. Louis is going to be the worst team in baseball, and that would be really sad because they've got a great fan base. But Lance Lynn, friends, 29.5% K rate, 225 expected batting average. It's St. Louis on the run line, but in the run line, when you're talking about a ballpark like Oakland, it's just going to suppress run creation. That's why you see just an eight total despite two pitchers. They give up power. This guy, this guy... It, I mean, this guy really gives up power. This guy doesn't strike out any. Don't bet anything here, friends. Last game of the night, I have a lean like for you. So yeah, it's something that I'm projecting a number for. And it actually ended up on my card on Monday night in the premium Discord. Again, very limited amount of spots that I really wanted people investing. We are still accumulating suit sample size. I will say that over and over and over again until probably May when I start actually winning bets. That'll be good. But Washington going up against LA here. LA, we don't know the pitcher. Patrick Corbin. We are very familiar. Uh, well, I wasn't familiar with the game. No, yes, we are, Shaq. We we, we do know that Patrick Cor uh, Corbin confirmed terrible at this point in his career as well. A lot of these older pitchers that are just in free fall. And, but he's been free falling now for a while and continues to get spot starts because apparently he has something on Major League Baseball that allows for him to keep pitching. Like he knows where the bodies are buried, so... 13.3% K rate. Uh, that's not good. 316 expected batting average. That's really bad too. Been better with the launch, but you know what? Teoscar Hernandez is a righty that is out there to destroy the souls of lefties. And I think he will this season. 424 expected slugging isn't even all that good so far. And relative to his 51.2% hard hit percentage, I expect good things to happen. But the key thing, Teoscar Hernandez strikes out a lot. So if he gets to face a lefty who does not generate swing and miss, ball, meet barrel. Barrel, meet ball. Ball go far. We got plus 400 or better sitting everywhere for Teoscar Hernandez today against another bad lefty here, this rookie. So I think against Patrick Corbin, a known bad lefty at this point in time, in this point of his career, Teoscar Hernandez, that, friends, is a lean like. Anything better than plus 350 will be on the card tomorrow. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist on the board for this crazy Tuesday. Back-to-back -back 15 gamers in the MLB. They have no give up going here for me right now, but that is okay. Here to put in that work, Devin. Don't give up. I love that commercial. Producer Jacob. Hi, friend. This is enjoyable. I'm going to go now. Check out NBA Lindy's. Yeah, we're talking playing tournament, baby. Back-to-back -to -back days of that. That's going to be fun. That's going to be nice. Gonna be nice as long as Chicago wins minus three. Uh, that's actually for two days from now. That won't even be on the video we're going to record. So there's that. That's a freebie. Chicago minus three. I should probably put that in the premium discord now because they, you should be betting that. Anyway, goodbye. Uh, oh, yeah, I should do my tagline. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets, friends, on Tuesday.